Hello there, this is a video accompanying the Joomla tutorial developing an MVC component, in particular this step of adding verifications. Now there's a couple of uh, very good tutorials on the Joomla documentation site associated with validation and this covers the client side validation and this page covers the server side validation so those are very well worth a read and i'll actually incorporate one or two things from those pages which aren't actually included in the joomla tutorial step now what i've done in preparation for this is i've added a few new fields into our hello world record so this is our message but i've added a number field uh, an email field uh, kind of like a password field, a secret field, and a date field. <clears throat> so let's cover the uh, client-side validation first. Now, client-side validation runs in JavaScript on your browser, and there's some fairly easy steps to actually including it. Um, the first thing is to include the JavaScript validation library, and that's what this line, jhtml behavior, form validator does within our edit.php that's this line here so that includes the library itself the second thing we need to specify which form it is we want to validate and that is also in this and it's adding of this class this style css style form validate to um, the form so that's straightforward and then for each field we need to specify if that field should have validation javascript validation and if so which validation routine should be used and in that case we add this class equals validate xxx where xxx is the javascript validation routine and we add that in an R our field definition so here's our greeting field for example and here's validate greeting <clears throat> and the final thing is then whenever we do get errors in our field we need to consider how those errors are displayed to the user and what we find is that the validation routine adds an extra class onto our uh, field <clears throat> and then using that we can style the field and the associated label differently so let's go through our various fields let's say here's our first greeting and we've added a validate greeting into our css class and we've written our javascript routine greeting so i've just copied these from the tutorial so if we go into add a new record and we put on our developer tools we can look at this particular field here and we see that it's got if i zoom in there it's got the validation or sorry validate greeting um class there and it's also got required as well so the routine then will check that it meets our um, greeting requirements by running this particular uh, routine against it javascript routine which as you can see has a regular expression banning anything which is zero to nine so if i put into here something like 99 um, and then come out of it it will complain an abc it won't complain also if i just leave it blank it will complain as well because um it is uh, set to required so that's our message um you'll notice as well if i put on 99 as again and we look at this down here we see that this css class invalid has appeared and if we go across to the right and look at input 
not invalid. You can see it's putting a border of that color. And there's the file that is providing that CSS. So I'm running the ISIS template on my administrator, and it already has some CSS associated with that invalid class. Um, but if you're obviously running another template, it could be that that is not included. So you might want to add some CSS styling um, for that in that case. Okay, so next, our next field is a number field. And in this case, if we look at our definition. I've got validate numeric here. Now I haven't got a numeric um, routine and that is because if we look at this tutorial here about client-side validation it specifies that there are a number of validate routines which are actually come with the library and validate numeric is one of those so when I've put in something here and like ABC and it complains it's actually running that validate numeric routine against it and finding there's a problem there. So if we put in something there, that'll be okay. Um, so the email, just, just put in a, an invalid email there. And if we look again at our definition, you'll notice that I don't, for my email field, have any class definition and yet there's the validation routine running here and if I look in particular on uh, the tools and zoom in again you can see it's got a class validate email so even though I haven't put it on in my code um, the fact that it's a type email field uh, has obviously encouraged Joomla itself to put that on. So Joomla is, uh, from the fact that I've wanted an email field, it's decided to put on the validate email uh, CSS class, which means that it's running this routine against my email address. So that's just something maybe to be aware of. Um, so I haven't put any validation on this apart from to say that it's a um, required field and I can add some data or other in there as well. So that's basically the JavaScript side of things um, and it is possible to get around the JavaScript validation so that is why we need server validation and the easiest way to show it I've put in a, a valid um, a value in the secret field here, which is a small a, and if I send that to the server, it's going to complain because I've, I've set it up for the server validation that it has to include a capital letter. But if I uh, show you a couple of things, first of all, curl is a is a popular utility, a command line utility, which allows you just to send various types of HTTP requests that you can um, form uh, just by hand. Uh, it usually runs on Linux, but there is a Windows version available. Um, also, Postman is another utility that can allow you to generate HTTP requests of any sort. But in particular, what I wanted to show you was if I, rather than using the F12 to get the Firebug tools, if I use the more modern Firebug, or sorry, Firefox tools by doing Control Alt K, and I just use this again, and that's just sent another post to the server with the same data. But if you look down here, you've got an edit and resend. So you actually click on that, go on down to the request body, and it's complaining because my secret here is a little a. So if I change that to 
something like capital AAA, it should accept it. Let me go back here and send. And it doesn't unfortunately update the main display here, but if I go in back manually to our Hello Worlds view, can see that that is the record that has just been put in and that has really avoided the JavaScript uh, validation and everything. I've just created that HTTP request and, and stuck the post parameters in myself. So this is really why we do need validation on the server side as well. So if we go on to that, server side validation, um, how we define it is we specify validate equals XXX on our fields. So we go into our code here. First one is our greeting, and it's got this line here, validate equals greeting. And that greeting is then a rule that must be either um, defined by ourselves, or there are a number of standard ones. In the case of greeting, we have got a greeting.php in our tutorial, which kind of returns the regular expression that it has to be verified against. So again, we're checking here that there's no zero to nines in the description. So if we go back to our code, and uh, we'll just edit this. And what I'll do is I'll go in and I have a version here of that edit.php, which has the JavaScript library um, commented out. So if I delete that, and this has got no JS, and you see there it's got the library commented out, and we'll just save that as PHP and this is in the live folder so when we come in now to edit this we're going to find that it doesn't have any validation on it so I can add numbers there and there's no validation routines running here because the library has been um, we've, we haven't just included it so if I send that now to the server it's going to be running the server validation and this is the standard message that it outputs invalid field message so it indicates the invalid field here if i put I fix that up again and then run something with an invalid number and save and close we find that it says field required number. And what is going on there, it's a bit different because this is actually a, um, if we go and look at this field here, we see that it's a type equals number field. So it's one of the new HTML5 type fields. And because it's that, uh, whenever we send the post up to the server, the HTML is going to, HTML5 is going to remove the number and it's not going to send it out. So if we have a look in the post parameters down here, we find that the number field is blank. And that's because the browser has actually taken it out. So you've got to be aware that the browser is doing certain things as well here. So if we put that back in, um, test.t, and if we remove that and make that invalid, and then send that to the server. Okay, so the thing I want to show here was that in our definition of the email, we've got this line here. And if you have a look through this um, tutorial here, you can see about adding a custom validation message and how you do that. So what I've done is I've, for this, I've added a custom 
validation message and just go to our strings invalid field email enter someone at domain so that's that custom validation message that is appearing on there and if we go back to our list of things we do get a standard error message which is warning and it gives the invalid field you can define a custom error message if we provide that message com equals something and then the other thing is um, depending upon what type of error it is you can define different sorts of um, messages as well and it goes and through that here um, providing more dynamic messages you can actually set the value and that's what I've done on the final one here so I've actually set it up so that if it's something in the past I'll just fix this up it's a date in the past it comes up with please specify a date in the future and I've also set it to reject to February the 29th and that's um, if I show you the code here for it somewhere it's validating against a routine called my date and the my date is one of these rules and it just has various conditions here so if it's less than today it puts out a message invalidate specify a date in the future if it's the 29th of February then it puts out another message so that's that I think the only other thing I wanted to mention was in the um, in the secret um, this is set up to be a password field so that whenever we start typing it doesn't appear um, but if we also remove it back down to there um, it's got a placeholder uh, an HTML5 placeholder and we can incorporate that by this hint equals message here and again this is something that I have um, that is translatable so I can go along to this to the strings here and it's just saying please include a capital letter so that really is what you see there okay um, I think that's covered everything I was wanting to speak about um, as I said the the best thing really is to go through those two tutorials the client side tutorial and the server side and really have a, a mess around yourself have some fun and try some things out okay thanks for watching bye